Hi, this is Lee Fursith from the Headwater Science Center, and today I'm reading one book and one book only. It is this one, Pangolina. Yes, it is by Jane Goodall. For all of you who are sitting back going, hey, I think I recognize that name. Uh, you would be right. But today, it's not about apes or primates. It's about Pangolina, which is a pangolin. Before we talk about that, let me introduce the show. This is Orion. He gets read to. He gets read to almost every single Wednesday. Every once in a while we wander off and we read to somebody other than Orion. But it's been Orion for the last few Wednesdays, and who knows, maybe that'll continue. Orion last week said, what do you mean you're reading a book about a bear? That was on the category that Orion said, I never want to hear those stories. <laughs> Big carnivores. Was there ever an animal less fierce, less threatening than a pangolin? Probably not. We'll get to that book in just a little bit. But I wanted to talk about something else first. I wanted to talk about words that even sound mean when they come out of your mouth. They even sound mean. Think of words that mean something mean and even sound mean. Here's one for you. Abhor. Abhor. Doesn't even sound mean. Comes out of your mouth, sounds mean. Abhor means to hate. Hate with disgust. I abhor it. So next time you're sitting down at the supper table, be careful with this one, this suggestion, don't blame it on me. But if you get served something that you go, oh, this is disgusting, you could say, I abhor it. See how that goes for you. I'm not sure you should do that one. Anyway, there's a word for you. Here's another one. Extinct. It even sounds angry coming out of your mouth. Extinct. Especially if you pick on the last three sounds, which are all syllables. I'm sorry, which are all consonants. Right at the end, here they come. Extinct. There's an N, a C, and a T right at the end. Extinct, and it sounds mean. It sounds like something terrible is going to happen. Well, I'll show it to you. Here is the word. Let's get this right on camera so we can see it. Let's take the word exit and add a few letters. So the E and the X, now what we need before we get to the I is a T. X. And here come an N and a C that come right in front of the T. Extinct. That's how you end up with three con consonants. That's how you end up with three consonants right at the end of the word, extinct. Okay, that's not the only reason I did this. I did it because there's a connection between the word exit and extinct. Because when an animal is extinct, it exited. It did an exit forever. When an animal leaves the earth, that's an exit. Forever it becomes extinct. Today, I'm going to talk about the pangolin. The pangolin, that's what our book is about, is an animal that is the most threatened in the world. At least that's what Jane Goodall says. But before, they do, before we do that, I want to tell you about another animal that currently is extinct. And this one's name, the name of the animal, is a beautiful name coming off of your lips. It comes out of your mouth. It is the kawaii o'o. Doesn't that sound fun? Here's what I like you to do as soon as the show is over. Go over to a mirror and say kawaii o o and watch your lips move because there are so many vowels in kawaii o o that your mouth just moves all over the place. And kawaii o o has a whole bunch of vowels. And I want to make sure I spell it right for you. So I'm taking my phone because I want to make sure I spell it right for you. The kawaii o o is spelled, here it comes, K. A, U, A, and there's a little tiny apostrophe, and then there's an I, and then there's another apostrophe, and then there's an O with that straight line above it, and another apostrophe, and an O with another straight line above it. So this bird's name, it's a bird, is the Kauai O'o. Kauai O'o. You can look it up after the show. And then you can go and look in the mirror and say, kawaii o o. So the kawaii o o was a bird. There's a past tense there. There's a past tense verb. Was a bird that lived in Hawaii and no longer exists. That means it became extinct. 
Now, how do animals become extinct? I'm going to tell you, the human being, us, we're not responsible for all the animals that ever became extinct. We're not responsible for all of them. Like the saber-toothed tiger, he's right over there. Uh, uh, James, can they see the saber-toothed tiger? He's on film. All right. I mean, we weren't even alive on Earth during the saber-toothed tiger, so we can't say we're the ones that caused them to become extinct. And we're not always intentionally causing an animal to become extinct. We don't always do that. Here's a story for you. At one point, beavers were so popular as hats that they would, everybody had to have one. Well, that was everybody who had a lot of money had that. And so everybody would, would roll out their dollar bills to buy beaver hats and they cover their heads with beaver hats. And so the beaver became threatened because everybody was killing beavers, not for the meat, not to uh, survive on, uh, on them as an animal that you might hunt. They were just doing it for the beaver pelt. That to me was an animal that became endangered out of a human's intention to reduce their numbers. But every once in a while, it's not that we intend to kill them all off, it's just that uh, something happens because of the way we operate, because of the way we function, and we cause the extinction. In either case, I believe it is our responsibility to see if we can prevent that. Because once the animal's gone, it will never exist again. Once the animal is gone, we will never see it again. Like the kawaii owl, the kawaii o'o. We will never see one except you, you know, sorry about that, Orion, except for maybe in a photo. In fact, today what I'd like to play for you is the song the Kauai O'o sings. You see, the Kauai O'o and its mate, mate for life. And they sing back and forth to each other, and it sounds like this. So here it comes. I hope this comes right across our streaming networks. Oh, got to turn up my volume because that wasn't loud enough. That's the, that's the sound of the Kauai O'o singing, in this case, according to this story. In this case, it's singing to the mate that it couldn't find. This author of that particular podcast believes that's the last Kauai O'o ever heard. How did the Kauai Oho become extinct? First, it was intentional. The Kauai Oho had beautiful yellow feathers. They were so beautiful that people said, hey, I'd like to have some of those feathers, maybe in my hat, or maybe I could wear them as an adornment on my outfit. And in fact, they became so popular People began exchanging them just straight up money. Hey, I'll give you three kawaii o'o feathers for whatever they were selling. And so they exchanged them for monetary purposes. And that threatened the race. I mean, I mean sorry, that threatened the species. That's not what did them in for good. See, the kawaii o'o lives, lived on the island of Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands, and when the Americans and the Europeans, uh, they didn't discover the Hawaiian Islands, when they decided to travel there, they brought with them, well, an insect. We know well in Minnesota, we know this insect really well, because it's one that when it's close to your ear, it is so irritating. Yeah, you guessed it, the mos that would be the mosquito. And the mosquito traveled with those people to Hawaii, where it flourished. It did wonderful. Along with the mosquito came diseases that mosquitoes carry. Those diseases killed the kawaii o'o. That's why they are extinct today. Having said all of that, I think it's time to read the book, Pangolina. I wonder if that's the right uh, way to say it, Pangolina. I think I will anyway. Jane Goodall, Pangolina. So, I'm a pangolin, and I was born in a big forest in a warm and cozy burrow. My mother named me Pangolina. 
Every night she went out to get food, always returning so I could drink her rich, warm, delicious milk. There they are, Orion. That's the mother. That's the baby, Pangolina. Yep, you're right. This is one story where you don't have to fear any large carnivores. On one special day, my mother took me with her. She went out. I clung to her tail. So I'm going to show that one to the... See it sitting on the tail? I clung to the tail. Uh, as she walked slowly through the forest, when she came to a mound of earth, she got very excited. Look, Pangolina, it's a termite nest, she said. Uh, here's an interesting fact coming about the pangolin. Then suddenly, out of her mouth, mouth shot a long, thin thing that looked like a giant worm. So there it goes. It's going all the way to there. We took that in consideration of her size of her body. We're talking about a tongue. In this case, it's five or six inches. But just think in comparison to her body that came out of her mouth. Looked like a giant worm. It pushed its way into a hole in the nest. And when she pulled it back out, I realized it was her tongue. And many termites were stuck to it, waving their legs. She pulled in her tongue and swallowed the termites. Wow! Right there. Wow. Ah, so that must be what makes her milk so delicious, I thought. I watched as she enjoyed a wonderful meal, shooting her tongue out again and again, catching many termites. It must be very sticky, I thought to myself. So I went close to find out, and I did find out. It was very sticky, and for a moment, my nose stuck right to her tongue, and I thought, is she going to swallow me? <laughs> Just like I was another termite, but of course, I was way too big. Those were the wonderful days. I was happy to meet other animals in the forest. There was Savet, so beautiful, with dark circles around her eyes and a handsome spotty body. That's Savet. Looks a little like a raccoon, huh? A raccoon to those of us living in northern Minnesota. I was a bit scared when Wild Pig and her piglets came by grunting and rootling in leaves. But they were only looking for fallen fruit. You are very welcome to join us, if you wish. Once I was startled when a large creature, a bit like a fox with wings, flew over us. My mother told me not to worry because it was only a fruit bat. We're talking about the bats. Almost every night, bats flew past with their pals, and we became good friends. You enjoying the story, Orion? Is this better than reading you a story about bears? Definitely less spooky, I think. Less spooky. Oh, there's a spooky part coming. <laughs> One day, we saw a very strange animal. It walked right up on two legs, and it did not have scales or fur or feathers, and I was frightened. It's okay, said wise Savet. It's a girl, and the young girl of a dangerous creature called a human. The girl squatted down to look at us. She seemed excited, and her eyes were kind. I wasn't frightened anymore. Then a loud voice called out. It sounded like, aye! And the girl jumped up and started to run towards the voice. She called out, coming, Mom. I grew quickly. My scales got hard. That's an important thing. Scales got hard. You're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute. A mammal with scales? I didn't think mammals had scales. Only reptiles have scales. My scales got harder. I learned how to open a termite mound with my claws that had become strong and hard. And one day my mother told me that I was grown up now and I should go off and find a mate and that eventually I would have a little baby that I could call my own. That was how it worked, she said. She would be sad to see me go. But she had to find another mate herself. That was the way of the pangolins, the way we all lived for thousands of years. 
You know, James, when I found this book in the library, I did get it from the nonfiction side. And I went, oh, they put the book on the wrong side. <laughs> I thought it should be on the fiction side. I thought, I've never heard of a pangolin. Clearly, this must be a fantasy. <laughs> this must be an animal that never existed. And then I learned, wait, this is an example, animal I'd never heard of, the pangolin. I was lonely, but I still had civet and bat and the pigs and lots of other animals who were my friends. And sometimes I saw the girl who I had learned was called Ai, walking in the forest. Gradually I got used to being away from my mother and life was good until one terrible day that I will never ever forget. I told you, there was a part coming. I was sound asleep when I was awakened by a fierce barking and the paws of a strange animal digging at the entrance of my burrow. Voices I did not recognize shouting something all at once. I was pulled out into the daylight with a strong stick. A man standing so tall on two legs pushed me into a cloth bag. I lay there, terrified and trembling, as I was carried through the forest. Two of my friends, Sabet and Bat, had been caught. This is human, said Sabet who was older than, and wiser than me. He does not mean to be cruel. He thinks we are just things that have no feelings, that we do not know fear or pain. He just needs to make money so he can feed his children. The man took us to a place where there were many cages full of animals from the forest. Mostly they lay silent and still, but they were crying. I was so terrified when I was pushed into that tiny, bare, cold cage. They are going to kill us and eat us, said Savet, who was in a cage near mine. And they will pull off all your scales because they make good human medicine. I cried all night, and I could hear the other animals crying too. And the next day, there were screams of pain, and there was blood, and the smell of fear was all around me. In my heart, I cried out for my mother. In the evening, I was pulled out of my cage. This is a good bargain, said the man who had caught me. Yes, said another voice, I will buy it. I was too frightened to move or even cry. I just curled up into a tiny little ball. So there's the picture. That's what pangolins do when they're frightened, curl up into a ball. As my mother taught me, to do when danger was nearby. Now I would never have my own little baby to love. I was picked up and placed in a sack. Then I heard a voice I knew. It was the voice of Ai yelling, no, no, he was shouting, please don't kill her. I learned all about pangolins at school. They are endangered. Look at her, look how frightened she is. Mom, she began to cry. Suppose it was me being sold for someone to eat, someone who would pull off my fingernails to use for no good medicine. Please help me save the little pangolin. Quite suddenly, I was dropped to the ground. I closed my eyes and curled up tightly. There it is again, curled up. Say, we have an animal that curls up when it feels endangered. That would be our um, ball python. Curls up, wow. curls up, doesn't want anything to do with anybody, so it curls up. I thought you were talking about like a porcupine. Or a yeah, or yeah, we have some, we have an animal right here at the science center. The ball python curls up in a ball. I closed my eyes and curled up tightly as I could. Over there, over there, somebody shouted. I am a police officer, I heard another voice say. It is against the law to hunt and sell pangolins. The noises faded and I heard small footsteps coming towards me. You are safe now, whispered Ai. I opened my eyes and saw her looking at me, surrounded by many kind faces. She looked at the police officer who was smiling at us, who smiled at us. You must take the pangolin to a sanctuary, she told Ai's mother. 
Ai picked me up gently and said, Let's take you to your new home. Well, that was a long time ago. Ai and her mother took me to a sanctuary where I was safe. And I learned that once humans understand that we animals can know happiness and sadness, fear and despair, that we feel pain, then they become kind and they care for us and protect us. I will finish my story by saying that eventually I came upon a, a male. He was so strong and handsome and we fell in love. And so I got my baby after all. The little boy who grew up and learned to feed on termites and make friends with animals in the sanctuary. People came to learn about us so that they could tell more and more children about the animals of China and how we are feeling just like them. What a happy way to end a story. Well, then we get to this page that gives you lots and lots of information about pangolins. And I'm going to tell you that this is very interesting and I'm not going to read it to you today, but I will get this book back to the library so that you could take a look at it. It will tell you about endangered species, animals, and it will tell you about the pangolin being the most endangered animal. It will talk about how, yes, they did take the scales off to use as medicine, killing the animals, of course, to do that. I couldn't tell you whether that medicine was ever effective or not, but uh, that's something that you could look up when you read the book. Today's book, Pangolin, Pangolina by Jane Goodall. And I hope you enjoyed the story. We at the Science Center here are open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 5 o'clock. I was about to say, oh, that's easy to remember because it's all the same. That's Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, 9.30 to 5. It is on Sunday when we're open, 1 to 5. So, Orion, why don't you say so long, see ya.